Right, okay, so we've uh, just got to the entrance to Clint Edwell, which is where we were yesterday, and we believe the route up to Igarn Mountain, which is to the right of uh, Tritham, is just up the um, same entrance as Clint Edwell. If I'd known that yesterday, I'd look for it when we were there in the day. <laughs> so we're going to try and find it in the, in the pitch black now. It's about, it's about 7 o'clock, just, so, just before 7 o'clock perhaps. So we've got an hour before sunrise. Um, and yeah, we've got about 45 minutes to get to the lake. So this is going to be pretty close. <laughs> It's been a really nice day and we've got some blue skies coming up so we might be able to there's the gliders and uh triffin triffin's over there you've got the glider bow over there so hopefully we'll be able to climb up here over to the lake and see all that in a bit as well um the wind's dropped it's amazing so i'm really really chuffed to get to sit here i was going to bring the zip boil and do my coffee at the top of the mountain but i really regret not doing that now because <laughs> i'd love to have sat here with the coffee oh it's amazing it's really really fast movement in the clouds um, and it's, but it's really bright over that side and dark over there. So I've gone for two, um, two filters. I've tried the ND8 with a ND4 grad just to darken the sky so I could bring my foreground up. And I've gone for a 15 stop super stopper. So I'm just using this rock, as you can see, that rock is my sort of foreground interest. And then obviously you've got Slint Ogwen Lake over there. And then that's Penny Oil Wynn over there and Triffin over there with the sun coming behind it. So it should be really, really nice. Um, the super stop has given me about an eight minute exposure. So I'm just kind of running around killing time. Um, but look at that. So the clouds coming over the mountains there, that's phenomenal. Really windy up there, I imagine, but uh, it's gotta be worth the hike. We're halfway there now. And Andrew's over on the end of the cliff getting a different composition over there. You literally look one step to the left and you'd be off the edge. I am off. <laughs> That's awesome, that backdrop. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, yeah. It's a shame I've only got one camera and I'm waiting eight minutes for this photograph. <laughs> Better be worth it. I don't know why I said that the wind has dropped and it's all turning out to be a lovely day. The colour in the sky is amazing, but the wind is just ridiculous now. So I'm trying to get a photograph of these rocks in the foreground with a lake in the background. And I'm having to lie down in front of the camera when the wind picks up because I'm trying to do a, a longest ish. Oh, look at that colour now on the left. Wow, I forget that. I'll show you that colour. That glow on the left hand side there. Wow. Hopefully that comes out, I haven't just overexposed it. So yeah, I'm trying to get a, uh, a bracketed image, three images, with the rocks in the foreground, uh, Lake Old Green in the background, and then the wind picked up and it's just blowing my tripod to bits because I'm on kind of grass, it's a bit boggy, it's not it's nowhere near solid enough to keep the, the tripod uh, steady. So I'm literally lying in front of, when I, when I hit the shutter and the wind picks up, I'm just kind of bobbed in front, oh, soaking wet. <laughs> I'm kind of bobbed in front of the camera just to try and block the wind a little bit from knocking the camera too much. Instead, it's blowing me all around the place. Um, so 
eyelid is behind me pointing in the completely different oh no he's facing the same way as me now i thought i was missing something for a minute and he's point he was pointing the other way i thought what's he got that i haven't seen <laughs> but no it's absolutely beautiful it's turning out to be really nice some awesome colors What a spot this is. I'm at the uh, waterfall which is just under um, the road that goes through Ogwen. And I've driven over this bridge a load of times and every time I do I forget to pop down and take a picture. It, again, it's quite a, a famous landmark really. It's a very well photographed spot. I've never been. Uh, yeah, so just down here now, just taking a bit of a panoramic. My trip wouldn't be complete without taking a panoramic image. So just trying to get the whole archway of the bridge really. Um, so starting over there, working my way around. I've got an ND8 on there which is allowing me to get 1.6 of, of a second, so nice and slow to get the movement in the water. I'm shooting at F11 as well, so I'm nice and sharp. I'm just focusing on these rocks here in the foreground. This is looking quite a nice image. Just I've done a bracketed two-stop exposure just to make sure I get the dynamic range of all these rocks in the foreground as well, because there's some lovely green in the rocks as well. There's actually another bridge here, if you can see. But I've got a bridge above me. And there's a bridge there as well. I'm not climbing down there to photograph that. Look at that. Well, guess what? This ain't going to plan. <laughs> we, uh, we've had to abandon ship. My tent died. One of the uh, poles on the turnover snapped. So I've got to say a massive thank you to the guys at uh, Cotswold Outdoors in Betsico because they uh, fixed, well, they replaced my pole on the, on the tent. So yeah, it just snapped mine. Luckily it didn't rip the outer sheet. So now we're in the woods. Uh, quite deep in the woods actually we've drove for about three miles and now it's, uh, it's pretty awesome so we're just going to find a spot which we've pre-assessed and uh, yeah get set up and it's nice and uh, sort of relaxed here isn't it blowing a gale the other side so this is completely different really cool
Right, well I'm in. It's mega early, it's only about, what time is it? It's probably about six o'clock. What, yeah, 20 past five. Uh, so it's mega early, so we're about three miles from um, a main road, so we're quite far into the woods. Um, so it's really, really quiet, really, really cool spot. There's a lake just there as well by where we parked the car. Seems like no one has really discovered it either, so we're gonna have a wander around there in the morning. Um, sunrise tomorrow is absolutely no no. The weather looks terrible for tomorrow, so uh, yeah, this this is a this is a bit of a disaster part of the uh, of the trip really. But yeah, we'll make the most of it. It's still good fun. Um, I thought I'd talk you through what I've brought with me as a few changes. So still in the Terra Nova um, Voyager tent, which is it's absolutely superb. It's, it's fine. It's I don't know what happened to that pole. I, I, don't, I don't know why why that split. I don't know. I spoke to them in the shop. They said that's just unheard of. So, uh, but yeah, that's the tent. Still got my X bed down that five um, sleeping mat, which is absolutely superb. I would definitely, definitely recommend that. Um, I've changed my sleeping bag. I've swapped it for a Van Gogh Pro Light 300, I think it's called. Uh, reason being is this is 500 grams lighter. The other one was seven, uh, 1800 grams. This is about 1300 grams. So massive weight difference. And they're supposed to be the same uh, insulation uh, on there as well. Um, still got all my clothes in the in the um, dry bags there. It's the first aid kit. I bought this little water bottle, which was recommended by one of the shops. So basically it's got a filter in there. So you can put stream water in there. And by the time you drink it, it filters it through through there. So that, that means you haven't really, really got to add the extra weight of carrying more water. So that's pretty cool. Um, um, still got the Osprey Kestrel 68 rucksack. That's been absolutely fantastic. That's just like a TARDIS. You can fill that up. And the other things I've bought with me are um, for my camera gear, I've bought an f-stop um, small ICU, um, so that's that's protecting my camera as well. Um, I've swapped my tripod as well. I did have the carbon fibre Manfrotto. I've gone for a super light Siru uh, T1204X. This thing is 800 grams without the head on it. I've got my G20X head on there, which is feels actually heavier than the tripod. This tripod is ridiculously sturdy. And, uh, and and super, super light. So I absolutely love this tripod. Um, it's, um, again, just saving me about a kilo on my uh, on my luggage. So I'm really, really pleased with this. And it does seem rock solid um, in, the high, in the high winds as well. So brilliant. Yeah, very, very, I'll put a link, I think I'll put a link for all this in the, in the bottom anyway, but the, that is a really, really good tripod. Love that. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna, oh, sorry, I haven't mixed anything. Uh, Matt for, sit on cold wet surfaces <laughs> that's about it um yeah that is it so we're just gonna chill here for a bit got my zip boil somewhere where is the zip boil zip boils here somewhere out there um just gonna have some have some dinner chill out for half an hour and go for a walk um it's, there's no wind outside it's just bliss i've got the door open there it's just I'm roasting actually it's not even it's not even cold so yeah gonna get some dinner on and then go for a wander so i'll see you in a bit Uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to grab the uh, the Fuji and I've got on it at the minute the 16 to 55 which I need to change and swap over for the 10 to 24 and we're going to do last night uh, we had a bit of a mess around, a bit of an experiment with the photograph in the tents in the dark and we were, <laughs> it's a bit of a laugh really, we were running around with the the, well, the torches that's lighting me at the minute, but with the red setting, the red light setting. So we were just swirling around the tent. So we're going to have another go at that. We've got loads of trees around us now. Uh, have another go at that, try something different perhaps. Um, have a bit of fun with that. So that it was good. Basically, all we do, all we had is this, I had this F4, uh, lens wide open, so at 10 mil. The ISO was about 800, maybe 600. Um, and it was a 30 second exposure and that just gave us enough time to walk around the tent um, <laughs> like a bit of an idiot spinning the light like this but quite slowly but spinning the light uh, yeah and it worked out really really well so I'll run out and do that obviously I'm not going to, be able to vlog that very well I'll try so you can have a laugh and see how they come out see you in a minute <laughs>
That's it, end of day two. Amazing day, been really, really cool. Hopefully we've got some really good photographs. You'll know by now if they've turned out. That uh, epic climb up for sunrise up the mountain this morning was worthwhile, hope it was. <laughs> it was gorgeous, enjoyed that. Uh, good to meet Isla as well, top, top bloke. I'll put a link to his uh, Instagram in the description. Yeah, really enjoyed. So thankfully, tent's still up, we're all sorted. The light painting seems to go well, running around the tents like a couple of idiots again. Uh, so tomorrow's the last day, so we've got to get up, perhaps move uh, to a different location. Uh, there's a few spots I, I want to I wanna look at, a few different lakes. And uh, So thanks very much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again for part three. Take care.